Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 and in this video I have the goal of setting a Kerbal onto the surface of Duna and onto the surface of Ike because we've got a Duna ejecta contract from Ike and we've also got a Duna stone contract from Duna and now we have to bring the stones all the way back to Kerbin so we can't just leave our Kerbals in orbit of Duna and get those contracts fulfilled. We also have a position satellite in a specific orbit of Duna contract here. It doesn't seem to require any particular parts, just the usual antenna that can generate power. And we also have the orbital station contract, but it's the same station we've been using. The only exception is that we have to have two pilots on board and presumably those will be like the pilots who uh, actually land on Duna and Ike. So I am here looking at our moon lander, which you should be familiar with in all of its glory. And it's got, I've got this tuned to Duna. You can see sea level, it's got a thrust to weight ratio of 1.45. I don't think that's quite enough for me. I would like more thrust to weight ratio than 1.45, but it's serviceable. The vacuum thrust weight ratio is hardly any more than that. And um, one way, I think we can just add some engines. So that's too small a nose cone. And we could just, we could have four of these spark engines. And if we have four of those like that, we could probably have a Oscar B tank in the center and have a docking port too. So just like that. And otherwise we do have to come back to Kerbin. I'll put some extra blazer on, let's say 120. I don't know how much we'll need, but let's go with 120 for now. And we'll also put on some scientific instruments. Now we haven't really done a Duna landing. We're immediately gonna be landing with a Kerbal. So that might be a dodgy thing to do. It might not be. Oop, I've got caps lock on. So that is lander and we'll have to see whether that's a good idea or not. 2,793 meters per second and it can, well, I can't really redock yet. We need some RCS, don't we? I also don't know if we want a drogue chute because obviously this parachute won't work on Duna, but I wasn't intending on using the parachute to land on Duna. Uh, route to the docking port. 10 units of mob propellant should be enough for just the docking, so I'll leave that be. And we're going to subassembly this. The question is how much does this all weigh compared to our lander? What can we take off from this, too? So we've got 205.8 tons. And if we Toss down there. It looks like this lander is 5.3 to 5.4 tons. So can we take off enough from here? Well, first, we certainly don't need this crew cabin. I don't think the station contract actually requires a cupola this time. Nope. It doesn't actually require the cupola, but it does require a facility supporting at least five Kerbals, so we might as well have the cupola. I'm going to just decide right now that we're going to keep a Kerbal with the station, so we're not going to have the controller down here. And it also occurs to me that our return vessel only has room for one Kerbal, so we'll have a permanent resident around Duna. Well, I think we did have some margin and everything. Part of the problem is going to be getting on over to Ike as well. Also, I need to make sure to disable crossfeed on that clampatron right there. We had a little bit of a problem with that last time. Yeah, we'll have to get to Ike. And then if we're going over to Ike and we're taking the station along, I guess we won't take the station along with us. But we'll have to refuel this Duna Mission 1 then. But are we carrying enough fuel down here to refuel it? It doesn't seem like it. Let's see, that's 720 units of liquid fuel. 
altogether the lander has uh, 180 there and 90 there, 270 and maybe a little bit more than that. So yeah, I think that would be a little bit better. But of course it's burdening our launcher a little bit more. Okay, well I'm tempted to try to add boosters or something, but maybe we'll just attempt it and see what happens. It's an interesting thing that we're going to be doing, landing like this. It's been a while since I've landed on Duna, to be honest. We'll continue to go with least experienced pilots. Jeb might actually be among those. Does Tedbury, Valentina, and Jeb all have the same amount? Well, I'm not going to put Jeb and Val at the same time. We'll, we'll let... Jeb was already in, so... He already got that uh, the booking. I think we'll have him in the cupola and Tebri in the hitchhiker storage container for now, and then Jeb will move on into the Mark One command pod later. Or maybe just for safety's sake, we could start Jeb in the command pod because there is a better chance for aborting in the command pod. Poor Tebri would be in trouble in that case, but yeah, the, the command pod could technically survive a situation. Okay, here goes nothing. Ready to go, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Uh, we're tending in one direction. I feel like I haven't auto-strutted enough. I think I might have been a little bit too steep on this. Okay, booster set. actually been sort of a pattern with this particular launch vehicle being rather steep with the SRBs because it's intimidating to try and turn it while those are going okay fairing set probably this Delta V is not reading quite right but I'm not sure I mean everything up there seems a little bit dubious Oh, uh, the solar panel flap is clipping into that satellite dish. Uh, not the best thing. Well, it looks like we do have to make orbit first. We can't just try and burn for Duna. Alright, well that's good enough orbit. I sure hope we have more in this particular stage here with the station. Otherwise, we're going to have an interesting time of it. But, for now, we'll plot and see what happens. It's possible that we only have that 889. It is possible. Oh, well, we have an encounter down there with Duna. That's reasonably in line with our orbital path, so I guess that's about as good as we're gonna get. The orbit for that Satellite is way up there. Okay, well, that's a close enough plot for now. I'm sure we're gonna mess that up anyway. So, time warping to the node. So, 1050, that means in theory what we have here is we'll have 500 left. If we take a look at how much it takes to make orbit around Duna once we get there, that's the minimal sort of thing we need to do. Um, that right there is going to take 700. So, but we're not very close to Duna there. Still, it is a concern if that reading is correct. And of course we're carrying more on top of the station than we were before with the landing pod. I haven't even thought about returning with that. That's going to take another thousand. We probably should have sent more fuel. We needed a more powerful rocket. I think for once we're going to be short of Delta V. I probably should have put ladder a ladder on the pod. I'm hoping the little jetpack can do a good job on Duna, but I'm not sure about that.
I need to check which biomes the Duna Stone and Duna Ejecta are. Okay, we need to go. Maybe it'd be safer just to do Ike first. And not do Duna just yet. We'll see when we get there though. Okay, that looks like the right docking port. And we've got two sparks down there. Alright, let's go. Well, it says 1,550 meters per second now, so... Okay, it was lying about the Delta V before. We'll see what we've got. I'm gonna temporarily lock the mod propellant up here. It's not my intention to use it, but once we... start the RCS off, if we need to... It'll start consuming that otherwise. Okay, well, let's see how things are going around Duna. We don't even have an encounter yet, do we? That's wonderful. Okay, well, that's the maneuver that we had. It's like that right now. It looks like we went too far. Well, we're going to need a mid-course adjustment there. Okay, but from a 101 kilometer orbit, how much does it take to capture? Uh, about 600. Okay, so we will head on over there and see about that. We could have left the cupola off and just counted the Mark 1 pod as the extra seat that we needed. That would have given us five. If we had treated, no, as long as everything is connected together, of course, that would count. That could have saved us a little bit of trouble. I think maybe a little RCS will be good here. Okay, that's all I wanted. So now we've got a nice little periapsis, pretty much in line with Ike. Have we done an EV report high over the sun? Oh, uh, he was... Oh, right, I had put Jeb in the Mark 1 pod. Good, good. Uh, EV report. No, we haven't. Keep. Board. Report. Keep. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and trans... Well, yeah, transmit that. Okay, we are in Duna SOI. I suppose we could do more EV report and crew report stuff. First time in the area for our Kerbals. And yeah, let's just transmit what we've got there. Now periaps is a little bit high, I've noticed. That's probably by time warping through the SOI changes. Let's just fix that a little bit. Okay, so... Retrograde. Okay, making Duna orbit. It's too bad the station around Ike definitely does not have liquid fuel and oxidizer. Otherwise, we could just refuel around Ike with that. But unfortunately, last time the main stage guzzled that fuel because I didn't limit crossfeed on the docking port. Yeah, looks like I should have started this burn earlier. Okay, I'll just stop it right where the apoapsis is right there. Uh, oh, and a little bit more. For our satellite. Though it's not quite the best situation. The best situation would be if the apoapsis is at the ascending node. But anyway, uh, Jeb is over here in the command pod. And I'm going to release Jeb right now. Wait, let's... Uh, yeah, we got the orbital station round Duna contract. So, yes. Let us release Jeb. That was a very mild decoupling. All right. Um, I'll use a little bit of mod propellant to RCS forward here. Okay. 
lock that back up again. And then back to the station, I'm going to rotate to let go of the satellite. The station itself has done its job after all. I'm going to put the rest of the fuel from this adapter into the main tank so we get a better sense. But remember, we needed 270 liquid fuel to top the lander off. And we are not going to have that much. So... I don't know if we need all the fuel with this satellite. Maybe I'm going to put... And we're going to enable crossfeed here. I'm going to put that fuel in here. Simply because I think we probably don't need that much up there. Might be wrong. We'll find out. Um, Tibri. <laughs> uh, transfer crew. There we go. Tebri was in the hitchhiker storage container, so wasn't in control of this. Tebri's gonna be our permanent crew around Duna, just as we had one around Gilly. Now, that's Jeb. That's our satellite. We're gonna deal with our satellite first. On Ike. We have to watch out for the station hitting Ike, though. It's sort of in a Ike-ish orbit. Eventually, Ike will grab it and fling it out somewhere and I just want to lift it to the general sort of orbit we need to be in but we need to correct our our inclination okay inclination burn oh it already accepted it wow okay that was quick it was really rough I mean we were off by four degrees of inclination and such um we're just holding stability now all right it took it so, now we have a choice. Land Jeb on Ike, land Jeb on Duna. Well, let's see, how easy will Ike be for Jeb? Ike's already gone past that initial opportunity. I guess we've got a thing there. That practically makes orbit already, huh? Look at that. That already looks like an orbit. So that's 18.8, .8, and if we focus on Ike, how much does it take to capture? Not a whole lot. But okay, at this point I want to see where what biomes we could hit for the Duna Ejecta. It says South Pole, Midlands, or Western Mountain Ridges. Well, South Pole is not going to be in the more or less equatorial belt that we've got set up already. Midlands, maybe. Western Mountain Ridges, maybe. Just taking a look. Ooh, we've got... Bring a newly discovered Class D satellite into orbit around Gilly. So, Gilly's gonna get a moon? That's interesting. Otherwise, mostly boring except for expanding Gilly Station. Okay, so Midlands or the Western Mountain Range is what we're going for. We'll head in like this. We have to worry about the station and what it might do with Ike, we'll see. Okay, time to do our correction at periapsis. Jeb still hasn't gotten to the tier where he can automatically turn to the node, I notice. Oh, that's a lot of Delta V, actually. Uh, oh, well, but it's lying. <laughs> it's, um, it's actually 2,774. All right. Okay, I was trying to activate these engines. I don't suppose you could do that for me. Let me put an extra thing there. Okay, good. We could have gotten by with just two of the engines. I just didn't want too close to a thrust to weight ratio of one at the surface of Duna. Okay, let's see what's actually going on. 
Let me get rid of the Duna Capture Burn. And not Duna, Ike Capture Burn. But uh, Ike Periaps is 15 kilometers, sounds okay. Hopefully there's nothing too iffy there. We haven't done low over Duna for the EVA and the crew report, I think. EVA report, keep board, crew report, transmit. Oh, right, no ability to transmit, fine. Uh, yeah, just keep. Okay. Proceeding. Oh, we are not in a safe orbit there. Somehow got a negative periapsis. Okay. Stepping aside there. Okay, that should be good. The question is whether... I mean, Midlands sh should be available to us. Midlands are everywhere. But honestly, I wouldn't be able to tell. Is that a mountain ridge? What counts as a mountain ridge around here, anyway? Are these lowlands here? Hmm. Okay, capturing. Okay, let's have Jeb uh, do a crew report here. Oh, uh, EVA first. Let's check the biome out. Uh, lowlands here. Keep, so no... Eject uh, around here. Oh, uh, we wanted to grab the crew report. And now, crew report. So, Lowland's there. What about this grayish area here? The Lowland's. Mountain range, central mountain range. Well, wrong mountain range. Does that look like a mountain range to you, even? Hmm. Well, how about around here-ish? There's a mountain, another mountain range. Would be eastern, I suppose, if that was central. Oh, this is Midlands. Okay, well, hmm. Are we sure it's Midlands? Let me wait a little while. I'd rather land over here than right on that ridge there. So around here, is it still Midlands? It is still Midlands. All right. All right. So we'll plan for landing there. Okay. I guess that's a good enough setup. Just keeping an eye on our station module. No, it's all in the dark now. Could make it hard to find the Duna Ejecta. Wait, why is it all in the dark? Oh, uh, yeah. Duna is blocking the sun. Okay. Well, this whole eclipse thing is uh, problematic. <laughs> Um, maybe we should actually have waited in orbit. I'm gonna lift that up just a little bit. Maybe we'll get out of Duna's shadow by the time we need to land, hopefully. Well, let's assume we are going to be landing here. Going down pretty convincingly for that. Gosh, I don't even know whether we're landing around the Midlands anymore. Oh, there are little rocks down there, but I don't know if they're the right rocks. Okay, that's probably slow enough. Let's EVA, EVA report, central mountain range, shoot. Let's not be going down this much. <laughs> okay, we've got a little bit further along. EVA, EVA report, still central mountain range. Okay, a little bit more time. Can't see where we are at all.
Midlands. All right. Okay, board. SAS on. And just cut the surface velocity. Let's just come straight down here. Now we have to find the rock. Well, there's random scatter right below us. That is not a Duna Ejecta. That's pretty obvious. Okay, we're on quite a slope. Apparently. Okay, well, anyway, let's do some science. Log temperature. Keep. Seismometer. Keep. And pressure, keep. All right, uh, crew report. Let's not overwrite. EVA, EVA report, keep. Uh, take all the data. Board, SAS back on. Uh, this is a little bit dodgy because uh, when we go out, we don't have SAS on there, and it's on a slope, so it can do nasty things. But anyway, crew report, keep. All right, let's EVA. They haven't actually told us to do, like, plant a flag on Ike or anything yet. But since we're going to be picking up a Duna Ejecta, that has to be with a Kerbal, I think. So anyway, take a surface sample, keep. Could have done that on the pod. It's still rocking around a bit. And let's plant a flag here. Okay, Jeb at the Midlands. Wait, am I actually at the Midlands? I actually didn't check what biome we're at. Uh, Take a sample, yeah. Okay, it is the Midlands, all right. Okay, so presumably Duna Ejecta. Now, is Duna Ejecta red? <laughs> that would make it easier because I don't actually see any red rocks nearby, but that's not a guarantee guarantee. What if it doesn't show up at night, meaning it needs more light to be cast on it for it to be visible. I think we should just wait until we've got some sunlight. I'll just leave them outside for now. It's not a whole lot of light, but... Well, definitely better than nothing. Anything around here that's obvious? We're already 1.2 kilometers away. Oh, there's a little rock casting a shadow there. That doesn't look like a random scatter. That looks red. Let's see. Yep, very red. Okay, no, not climb. Um, pick up, do not ejecta. There we go. Okay, grab. Board. All right, SAS back on. I think we should just get into orbit at this point. And we'll go prograde just for simplicity's sake. So now we're going to have some questions to answer about what we want to do. We could try bringing Jeb directly back. Or we could try landing Jeb on Duna. In which case Jeb might not have enough Delta V to come back. First, we have to rendezvous with the station if we want to go to Duna. If we don't want to go to Duna, we don't have to rendezvous with the station at all. So that's the choice. And I think I'll leave that for the next episode. We're going to find out what happens to Jeb next time. We've landed on Ike. We've got Duna Ejecta. And we could just bring it back. And then we would have fulfilled three contracts with this. Uh, putting the station around, putting the satellite around, and getting the Duna Ejecta. But maybe we want to land on Duna 2. I'll get your thoughts on that. Uh, do you want to subject Jeb to more risk? 
Or shall we bring him home? 1,338. We'll have to break orbit from Ike, but that puts us leaves us in a high orbit around Duna. I think it would be easy to get out back to Kerbin with 1,388 meters per second. Uh, but if we pick up more fuel from the station, it, it takes a little bit to rendezvous with the station, but if we get that fuel from the station, maybe that'll be good to land on Duna with. This alone is not enough to land on Duna. I don't think. Duna can slow us down a bit, but I wouldn't be confident about getting back into orbit with just this much. So, we will see. Yep, you guys can give me your thoughts on that, and we will see what happens to Jeb in the next video. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.